Okay, should be live now. There we go. There we go. You want to start, Chief? I'm start. I'm here. I just, you know, making sure. <laughs> Chief likes hey, to check, check, double check. I like to check, <laughs> check, double check because sometimes this stuff is just, you know, it doesn't uh doesn't always work out sometimes. So. Let's get this going. Let's get this going. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. We have a special treat for you today. But first, let me introduce my co-hosts. I'm Chief Master Sergeant Louis Ray, a senior listed advisor for the exchange. And of course, you see on screen, Julie Mitchell and Leah Matthews. Ladies, how are you doing? Doing good. It's good to see you again. <laughs> good to see you. Leah, everything good? I'm all good, Chief. All good. Excited for this today. Oh, I'm super excited. I hope I hope all, the audience members are hungry today. Hungry for a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <Boom-a-boom. laughs> all right, that was the corny joke of the day. <laughs> That's mine. This is my joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, Julie, can you take a, a few seconds to introduce our big time guest? Yes. Sir, we are so, so, so excited to welcome today's guest. He is the first celebrity chef to join us, and he is a huge supporter of our men and women in uniform. He has a passion for eating well and physical fitness. You know him from a variety of programming on the Food Network, including Dinner Impossible, and he's written a number of cookbooks. Please help us welcome Robert Irvine. How's everybody doing? Good. How are you? Well, you give me 20. Let's go. Come on, Chief. <laughs> I got you. I have, show. I, have to, I have to walk back here to do the, I have to come back here to get down and do the 20. Oh, All right, let's yes. see it, Chief. Come that. on. I love that. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Julie, that was a good intro. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Did you like our joke about being hungry? That was good, wasn't it? Uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> We got to go back to listen. You got to go back to the drawing board on the joke stuff. <laughs> okay, <laughs> try again next week. You know. I've got one for you. Okay, why do you that? never? Why do you never date a tennis player? Ooh, why? Because they don't know love all. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but my I'm son so plays tennis, so I got your joke. Yay! <laughs> Buda boom. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> Maybe the audience is laughing. I don't know. Let me see. Are there any laughs in the audience? No. Yeah, let's that's check that. out that. I've got some good ones, but they're not, you know, they're for bar rooms and things like that. <laughs> Robert, it is such an honor to have you on with us today. So thank you for taking time out to join us. And for everybody watching, thank you. Um, be sure to leave your comments. If you have any questions for Robert, we will be um, throughout the broadcast. We'll be sharing those and asking your questions for you and then leave him some love. If you want to start your watch party and enjoy this with your friends, now is a good time. Hey, Robert. So thank you so much for joining us. We truly appreciate it. I know the servicemen and women out there and their families appreciate you taking some time to spend with the military community. So thank you so much. Um, so how you been holding up? What part of the world are you in now? What's going on in your life? Well, I'm, I'm in Florida right now. Um, I was actually filming in State College, Pennsylvania, when this all went down. Um, and it's kind of funny. Well, not funny. I got food poisoning and ended up in two days oh, no. in the hospital. It, this is the funny part now, not, not the two days in hospital because it wasn't that much fun, but obviously the coronavirus took, took hold, I had the coronavirus test. When I got out, all my crew had already left, right? We were supposed to go on um, to San Diego, to San Diego Naval Medical Center with Gary Sinise, then go on to Hawaii and film Dinner Impossible. And obviously it all stopped, but I was trying to get a, um, uh, a Lyft or an Uber kind of thing to take me back to the hotel, take me to the airport nobody would take me from the hospital. It was, it was the funniest thing. Normally, no problem. You can get an Uber or Lyft anywhere. I come out of a hospital having food poisoning, nothing else. And nobody, I called like 15 Ubers and nobody would take me. Oh man, That's did you have terrible. to walk? That's awful. Well, it's like a long walk, you know. Um, uh, so we're, I'm in Florida and, and uh, it's eased up a lot here. Um, I went through nine weeks. So this house that I'm in, we built about three years ago. My wife and I, Gail, is in Nashville working right now, wrestling. 
um, my wife's a professional wrestler. Yes. So we built this and I spend normally about 11 days a year here. I've spent almost 10 weeks and I'm ready to like, <laughs> we're getting back on the road next week where we're going back, but slightly different. We are taking two buses, two tour buses, and we're going to do restaurants up the East coast, bringing them out of this pandemic to get them back on their tracks and, uh, and fixing obviously with all the social distancing and all the, all the correct procedures for camera guys, et cetera. Uh, and I can't wait because, uh, um, we get to see a lot. In fact, we'll be at um, Titusville next week. I think it is. Um, a little late for the rocket launch, but um, <laughs> we'll be there. So they'll, but they'll be up there already. But um, it's pretty awesome. So excellent. Excellent. Robert has um, has anything changed? I know your show is still going on. Have Have you had to cancel anything because of the pandemic? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at my schedule, my schedule, I travel 345 days a year. Oh, wow. And I have wow. done for the last 10 years uh, all over the world. So we I say when we, we do um, Diego Garcia, we do Afghanistan, Iraq, Poland, Spain. I mean, you name it. We go there in between doing shows and, and the stuff that I have. Uh, I have three restaurants, one restaurant in the Pentagon. Obviously, that changed slightly because the draw of, of folks in the restaurant so, uh, instead of being... Um, 36,000 a day in the Pentagon is down to about five right now. So obviously that changed slightly, but we were supposed to be filming three separate shows from March the 12th all the way through. So obviously that stopped for 10 weeks. Now we're going to try and pick that schedule up again, but also my USO tours, my base visits, my, you know, all those things that have changed. Um, uh, but but we'll pick them up again. So yeah, I mean, my whole schedule changed uh, and from going 345 days a year being crazy, crazy, crazy to being stood still. Um, when we talk about, you know, anxiety, and I'm not an anxious guy, we have 2,800 employees that we, we have around the globe and doing what they do in, in, with bars and, and alcohol and all the other things that we have. Um, and I found myself getting anxious just sitting here, mm -hmm. knowing that, that all the things that we normally do, I can't do them. I can do this. And Zoom, mm -hmm. and, and in fact, we shot four television shows here this way, funnily enough. Um, wow. And it's just, it's it's not the same as a human, you know, when you go and say, hey, how are you? Not that we'll be shaking hands anymore, but, you know, how are you? And and, and the dinners that we do and all these things um, this weekend, Memorial Weekend, just passed, obviously. Uh, normally, I'm at the Coke 600. I fly into D.C. I do a dinner for taps for a thousand folks on a Saturday night. I do the PBS special on a Sunday uh, with Sinise and, and Matanya. Then on Monday, I go to Arlington, where I visit the hospital first, Walter Reed. Then I go to Arlington. Then I do a float with TAPS, and I, I host um, Sideline Report with ABC. So for that week alone, is not only honoring our, our, you know, our fallen heroes and their families, the Gold Star families, but it's such a change, and we had to kind of do it from here. You know, I did the TAP mm -hmm. seminar just like this with a, with a thousand families. And um, it's, it's a new way at the moment. So uh, it's, I don't think I, I like it, but. <laughs> We're all trying to adjust, right? Right. right. Still. <laughs> yeah. Well, the military does it and you guys know. You, you, you turn on a dime, you, you do things that you, you're not used to every day of your life. And that's what's so cool about our military. <laughs> if you think, you know, in New York or in Chicago and in, in Colorado setting up hospitals this this and this and we adapt so well and that's something that that unusually civilians in our world don't normally do that so fast it takes a lot of change and the military does it every minute of every day DOD civilians who are used to this um, they're like oh yeah no problem we just go up and set up a hotel or a hospital or this or that or the other um, and that's why I'm always in awe at, at, at you know, we have 1.4, I think it is active duty military men and women and uh, 453,000 uh, National Guardsmen and uh, then with reserves. And, you know, it's amazing how you can get a body of people to do what you want them to do. And they do it all together. Yes. That's true. In the Air Force, they say, you know, flexibility is the key to air power. And, you know, that, that applies to all services. But what else do they ranks. say? What else do they say? Fly it. What is it that, that I did? Aim high, fly, fight, high. win. 
Yes. So, <laughs> so I did a show. This is the truth with General Devereaux way back when at Shepherd Air Force Base. It was the 60th anniversary of the Air Force. And I had this um, master sergeant who was like 17 foot tall. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. He he rode me like a pony. He's like, no, 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 no. And I got to fly in a 38 jet, but I had to feed a thousand airmen in a very short amount of time. And obviously military, it was in the military. So for me, organizational skills and da, 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 da is what we do. But I never forget that because uh, it was pretty awesome. This, and I forgot his name, but uh, I'm going to look at the show again, but it was an amazing experience. So, so Robert or Chef, we know you love our nation's warfighters and their families, and, and I know this because I've been to Operation Snowball Express for about three years uh, in Orlando and in Dallas. So I saw you, and I saw the room where we feed all the families, you know, those fallen, the families of the fallen service members, and yeah. you're talking about 1,500, 2,000 people, and all the kids are there, family members are there, and you come out on stage, and you welcome them, and you say thank you, and you spend time with all of them, and it's amazing to see you cook for all these people. Uh, to be fair. So I know you really love the military. You're a big military supporter. Our heroes would love to hear some words of inspiration from you during this time. What can you share with all of them out there on the front lines? Well, I got to tell you, first and foremost, thank you. You know, I, I say this all the time. You know, we do sc snowball, we do skyball, we, we do all these events. Uh, and it's, it, and it's, it's our service to support your mission, right? Not only are the USO tours and things, but what you do every day, and I'm looking at all of you right now, what you do every day is something special. And I know it gets frustrating and I know it gets uh, repetitive. <laughs> I know it, right? We do the same things every day. But without you doing what you do every day, we couldn't have this and it's called freedom. Whether you're, whether you're a drone pilot, whether you're security forces, whether you're a cook, whether, you know, uh, missile silo, putting the, you know, the trucks, putting the missiles down the, the, the hole, um, it, it's something special. And I, and I look back at my service and I think how, how wonderful my service was. And then when I came out, I took all those amazing lessons of leadership, of leadership, respect, honor, dignity, teamwork. And that's what's made me successful. So this is for all of you. Keep doing what you do because without you, we don't have anything. And learn as much as you can because eventually when you do retire after 77 years, I know 30 something, um, <laughs> you can use those, those tools that you are given. You're being paid to have fun. And you don't think it right now, some of you, I know, but you're being paid to have fun. When you come out, those tools are priceless in your next part of your life. And they really are. It starts with leadership and all those amazing things that I just mentioned. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And you will see me somewhere in the next uh, four or six months where you are, believe me. Excellent. Thank you for, thank you for those words, chef. I know it means a lot to military and the families, as you know, the exchange, our associates, we are mission essential, our stores and restaurants, they've all been open uh, to serve war fighters. 85% of our workforce are connected to the military in some way. Um, along those same lines, we'd love to hear some words of encouragement for those associates who are out on the front lines serving military families every day. And, I, and I'm going to say the same thing here. So all, you, all the associates, all the store managers, the assistant managers, everybody works in that unit, that store, to create excellence. And I mean excellence. You know, there's one thing this pandemic has taught us. Um, there are a lot of heroes out there. Not all of them wear uniforms. You know, doctors, nurses, truck drivers, farmers, store attendants. Um, I, I don't know how to say that filling the shelf is exciting. It's not, but I did it for a living when I was, when I was a young, before I joined the military, I filled uh, uh, stock shelves in a freezer um, place called B-Jams in England. Um, it is so important to what you do. And again, we know you love what you're doing because you wouldn't do it otherwise, right? It's not a paycheck. And that's something that's different. You know, what you guys are doing is supplying the force and the families when they're deployed, the families are deployed or at home, you're supplying them with food that is essential. You are the essential workers. You are keeping us safe, making sure this, and you don't think this, it's the funny part. When I take this apple, I'm wearing gloves and I put it, you know, onto a, onto a, um, 
a podium or onto a, a shelf or onto something, you're making sure that's good enough for me to eat. And I can't stress how much the supply chain and what you do is so important because without you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. You know, an army marches on its stomach. So does the Air Force, so does Marine Corps, so does Coast Guard, so does the <laughs> Army, right? And the Navy. Um, we, we, we trust you. We believe in you. And you are, I hate to use this word but, or this statement, but you're the force within the force, not the force behind the force. Without you, um, and we could put a uniform on all of you, not that half of you haven't already worn the uniform and continue to serve, but, but it's really important when you go to work every day. When I go into a store and I go into to a business exchanges and all these places and commissaries and I see the smiles and the faces, and believe me, I've been to a lot of stores. You know, we have a lot of product out there. Um, and I have so much fun and so much, like, thanks for what you do. This is not BS, guys. This is serious. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a different level of service. And it's, it's those that wear the cloth of our nation, those that support those that wear the cloth of our nation and the families, service above self. And it's really special. And you've got to be in that community to understand that. But when you leave that community, then you see what it's really all about. Um, and it's special. And I thank you for doing that. So whatever you do every day, put a smile on, be strong, because somebody else might not be having a good day and you can change it. Thank you for that. That was really, really profound. And you really, that's going to mean so much to our folks on the front lines of, of retail. Um, our teammates are super, super passionate, and you captured that perfectly. Thank you so much. Um, I believe, because I believe it. I can you're, tell. I, you're all, you're so authentic. It, it, it's something that is innate in, in human beings. We want to serve, right? And those that have, have served in the military and those that are serving uh, DOD civilians, and, and it, it's, it, it's really interesting when you get to down, down and dirty one-on-one -on -one with them, and I do that. I'm the guy that goes in and buys the apples and the, and the, and the steaks and the whatever. Um, and I just listen and I want to know each and every one of their stories because there's some amazing backgrounds. And that's what makes it so interesting for me when I travel. Yes, I can go and cook in a galley or on a, on a, on a ship. Uh, I can go to an army base and go to an air force base and go down a missile silo. I can see the fried food, the, the microwave food. I can see all that. I get, mm -hmm. but I want to know the people that are running this country. The 19-year-old guy that's backing up a 75-foot truck to put that missile propulsion system in a hole. The guy that's putting the apples on the store. The girl that's slicing meat. The, it, it's fascinating to me. <laughs> Thank you. You're getting so many, so much love on Facebook right now. All kinds of people who are tuning in. Um, Tanya's watching from Fort Hood. Uh, Karen says... Hey, Thank you. She's watching from Milford, Nebraska. Angela says um, she had the pleasure to meet you in Okinawa. And Jackie says hello from Arizona. Jennifer says she loves you. And her son got to cook with you at when y'all when they lived at Fort Lee. Kathy Stoll says, thank you for taking time out of your day to come and see us. We truly appreciate it. So chef, everybody loves you. It's unanimous. Oh. Everybody loves you. <laughs> we, we, I've been really blessed. And I mean this, I, you know, when I came to this country in 1997, um, I became a citizen shortly after that. And my love, my love, and my wife always says this and, I, and, and she's right, by the way. But I say this in interviews and television, you know, I'm not passionate about cooking. I have a passion for cooking, but I'm not passionate about it. What I'm really passionate about is our military. Food allows me, it's the vehicle to get me from point A to point B. But when I travel with my team and we do shows and we do all these things, it's the people that I meet, right, that, that make the difference. And I, I remember being in Afghanistan in 2013 with General Abrams, who's now out in Korea. Uh, he was a two-star general at that point. And he said to me in the middle of those 36,000 troops in Afghanistan at that time, and we had some amazing fun. He said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to go and see all the, I want to go all the Ford operating bases that nobody gets to go to. And he said, okay. 
Chinook helicopters, we went and we, Frontenac, we're talking about some not so nice places. And um, he, when I came back from, from that trip, he said to me, when you come back to the States, please don't let anybody forget what we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, no matter where it is around the world. And, um, and I'd never forgotten that statement. Now, obviously, he's uh, in charge of Forces Korea. Um, you know, uh, John Campbell, who was the, the, the vice chief, now General Milley, uh, General McConville, um, General Goldfein. It, it's, it's, and it's not all generals, right? Because generals don't run the military. It's the chiefs. <laughs> right, chief? That's um, right. <laughs> so, so it's just interesting that I, I get to see both worlds and I get to interact. And I also get to be kind of um, a mouthpiece when I hear things, you know, and, and, and I get to say, hey, listen, you know, maybe the food wasn't as good on that base as it should have been. Maybe, the, <laughs> you know, this shouldn't have been this. Maybe this should. Um, and I take I take that as as my job also to go to the senior guy and say, hey, listen, you know, yeah, maybe we should look at that or, or maybe we should look at this or, you know. If, if you need my advice to help, that's what I'm there for. I, I want to be a, a, a piece, um, a tool to be able to, to change things for the betterment of whatever that is, whether it be PT, which I'm crazy about. Obviously, we're all crazy about PT in the military. Whether we like it or not, <laughs> we've got to do it. Uh, and, and feeding and, you know, food is comfort. Food is not only comfort, but it's also resiliency. Um, and that's for the stores, you know, when we think about stores, when our, our, our folks are deployed, how do we feed our kids? How do we feed our, our, our families? You know, when, uh, when the, the guys and girls are deployed, how do we take care of those families when they're on base while we're forward operating? You know, I, I, and I think a lot of that and food and stores and, and, you know, bowling alleys and all those kind of things are really important because they pass time. Uh, for the families and it makes it easier for the deployment because mom's at home and I'm saying mom's but it could be dad's role reversal mom's are the chief cook the bottle washer the doctor the 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 the, the coach the the plumber the you know all the things that military spouses are used to right so if I can make them any easier make jobs easier and make life fun um, that's what I'm there for and don't forget that when I say that whether it's Afghanistan uh, Syria um, I mean, there's not, I don't think there's any place we haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about staying in shape, right? And at the exchange, we promote a beat fit lifestyle for our military communities. Woo! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so what, what tips do you have not only for cooking healthy, uh, but also what tips do you have to stay in shape even beyond the pandemic? So here's, here's one of the things that I tell people all the time. I'm holding an apple because I always get nervous. I'm kidding, I don't. <laughs> First of all, we, we always think about olive oil, right? Olive oil is good for finishing dishes, mm -hmm. but it's not really good for cooking dishes. Why? Because olive oil reaches 325 degrees, then the goodness is gone in it. So it's really not good for heating food. You need grapeseed oil, something that gets a higher temperature to sear the food so oil does not get into it and it doesn't change the flavor. Um, grapeseed oil has zero flavor, so it doesn't absorb into anything or take the flavor away. Um, small meals. When you get up in the morning, all the 19-year-old girls and guys that are watching this, you got to eat. The machine doesn't work without food. And that doesn't mean a cup of coffee. You know, the minute you wake up, you should be having some oatmeal or something to start your day. Oatmeal, I say, because it, it, it lasts about two hours of slow burning. It gives you the carbohydrates that you need to to get to get moving then you eat every two to three hours something small and it is possible in the military i'm working on it right now you know we talked about fort lee earlier i'll be at fort lee again um in the next actually august i think um the way in which we we used to eat is different every two to two and a half to three hours we need to be eating something small and and it if we think about protein, it's the size of a deck of cards per meal. If we think about carbohydrates, remember the old mouse, not the finger on, on this computer now, but the old mouse, it's about the size of the old mouse. So as we eat through the meals, our metabolism speeds up. And, it, and I put it in, the, if you go to school and your kids get tired at noon, 
is because they didn't eat breakfast. The blood sugar level drops, you get unfocused and you can't do your job. And, that's, and, the, and the body has a funny way of telling you. The body will tell you when it's hungry and when you need to eat. And I've proven it a thousand times. You know, if I say to you, okay, you're gonna eat every two hours, uh, Leah, from now on for a week. And you'll say, I can't do that. And it will be really hard for you to do it. But after that week, your body will then ask for food. It will tell you exactly when I, I need to eat because that's the energy levels that you need to keep. And I think one of the things we don't do well, and if we look at spec ops, look at them all day, right? You know, um, and rescue swimmers and all these guys, they eat a lot because their body demands that they eat a lot. Right. If you look at special operations feeding, it's a little different. Why? Because they're, they're more arduous circumstances. I guarantee if you ate every two and a half to three hours, like I just described, your body and your mind would be a lot clearer and you'd be a lot fitter because your metabolism speeds up all the time. It only stops when we do, oh, let's have a cup of coffee in the morning and a cigarette, right? <laughs> Not condoning that you smoke. I don't smoke, it's up to you, what do you smoke? But you need to eat breakfast, mid morning, lunch, mid afternoon. And then I hear, well, we, we can't get away. Then pack something, take a bar, take something that's, that's, that's gonna help you get through those cravings. Um, and, and for people that create food, make it exciting. There's nothing wrong with salt and sugar. Just use it the right way. Um, Moderation, right? Yeah, I, I, I always laugh when people say, oh, you know, we've got to do this because it's a standard. Well, I challenge standards all the time. I don't challenge authority, I challenge standards. Because those standards when we, when we create food are changing depending on what we do as a job. You know, if I sit in front of a computer all day or I sit in, in Maelstrom, right? Security forces watching a little hole in the ground because that's what they do. How do I keep them alert instead of just microwaving stuff? Or, or how do I keep those two guys on watch in that vault? How do I keep them so they can do what they do? And I'm always thinking about health and fitness and exercise and food and, and how can we make it better so that we get the peak performance of people. And that's kids too. Good point. Look okay. at, look at, look at, I'm sorry, Luis. Look at, look at 70% of our military is based on families of military, right? The kids come through and they become military folk. And it's so interesting because when I grew up in England, you know, it's mashed potatoes in England, not very good for food. <laughs> mashed potatoes, steak and kidney pies, fish and chips, etc. And when I, when I met my wife, who's um, Canadian-Korean, completely different, right? She's rice, she's noodles, da-da-da. And, and the health difference is so unbelievable. So we are what we put into our body. And I'm not saying you have to eat like rabbits or, you know, all that sort of stuff. But eat smartly, eat, eat, eat. pick your choices well. And it's okay to have a cheat day. You know, I had a big bucket of ice cream yesterday and cookies. Who cares? Yes. <laughs> so let's let's but spin off let's spin off that chef, right? You just you just put up the guns. So okay. let's spin off that, right? They say, look at them guns. <laughs> so you know, this wow. one this one wow, wow, wow. This one's called, this one's called casualty. Whoa. Oh and my cemetery. You crack, hey, you crack walnuts with those things? So it's funny, this one, this one is uh, just had shoulder surgery six months ago, and I'm already oh my gosh. And again, it goes back to health. The recovery time is literally half of what it should have been before me even, my doctor said I shouldn't even pick up a weight. I'm already back to full weight lifting. So, and you don't need to lift guys, all the big, all the big guys out there that wanna lift lots of, lots of, try 50 reps instead of three reps. And watch what happens to your muscle elasticity. We don't need to be big and brutal. <laughs> so would you say, uh, would you say, uh, you always hear it a lot, right? They say, you know, you got 100%, 20% of the work to get fit is at the gym and 80% is a diet. I would, so I can tell you, I did a muscle and fitness shoot last year. And I, um, it took me four weeks to get ready. I didn't do one ab at all. And I will tell you, I was in the best shape of my life. And there was no, there was no, um, um, what do you call it? Um, 
skullduggery. There was nobody messing with it with the pictures and uh, and I, and I think the diet the diet is is the same in everything that we do. If you think about it, you can indulge, you can have fun, um, but you've got to be smart when you do it. I mean, there's the there's the Oh, look at wow. that abs of steel. What was that abs of steel oh, up in there? But I didn't oh, do my. one sit up. I didn't do Whoa. one sit up on that. Not one sit up at all. Whoa. Hold on, but those airbrush, chef? <laughs> ah! He said no Photoshop. <laughs> fighting words where I come from, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I won't because we're cheap. So, um, no, I, I just think I, you don't need to do, and this is the truth, you do not need to do abs. You just said it there, chief. 80% is diet. And all I'm saying is, you can drink soda, you can drink tequila if you're your age, you can drink wine, but there's a moderation to it all. And I know it's hard to tell a young service member, young meaning old enough to drink, by the way, um, you know, hey, you should only have one drink instead of two. You, you know, we've got young adults that are smart enough, they're wearing a uniform, they know what to do, they know the, they know the levels of what they got to do it to. Just be smart when you do it. It's really good All advice. excellent tips. <laughs> good yeah. advice from the man himself. Wow. Well, I, I learned something. I didn't know that about olive oil. Yeah. And it's funny because we, if we look at 80% of olive oil, and you can, you can check this out. Don't take Robert Irvine's word. There was a, <laughs> there was a big CBS um, investigation, if you like, into, into uh, olive oil was one of the foods. Then it was other, other stuff coming from Italy and how the Italians have now a police force just for food. Wow. wow. Because the, the, the ripoffs or the, the, um, the changes of them, the cheese isn't the real cheese, the olive oil is not the real olive oil. Um, there's a lot of um, stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. um, so the police force for food is bigger than the food for, uh, police force for criminal. Oh, wow. And it's cbs.com slash olive oil. Put it in. You can read about it. Wow. Uh, it's really interesting. Have to do and, that. And, and good olive oil is amazing, right? You can get it from Spain, Italy. I mean, you can get olive oil from anywhere. Um, but but I wouldn't cook with it. If you go to any of my restaurants, even in the Pentagon, I make dressings with grapeseed oil. Uh, everybody that works in that, that that building gets dressings made with olive oil. Uh, sorry, with grapeseed oil. Um, I don't even have olive oil except for salad. Hmm. So. Wow. Chef. A lot of us have been cooking at home lately due to the pandemic and staying home. Um, you want to share what are your favorite dishes to cook? Um, and have you found any new inspiration during the pandemic? So my new inspiration is, is not really new inspiration. It's really old inspiration. So for years, you, you mentioned I did Dinner Impossible, which was a show that was just like the military. You get an order, you figure it out and you do it. Well, we've been doing the same here. Just like everybody else, when you go to a store, unlike your stores, because you pretty much have everything there, um, we couldn't get certain things. So I would put out on, on this little gadget, the smartphone here, or my <laughs> wife would, four proteins that we'd had either in the freezer or in the refrigerator and anything in, in the pantry and say, okay, you pick the, the product, uh, the protein, the, the um, produce, and I will make something from it. Right. So I believe, and I've proven this many times uh, on tours, by the time you have done a hundred push-ups, chief, I can create a meal with just food that you put in a space for me to make. As long as I have a heat and a knife. By the time you've done a hundred push-ups, I've got a meal on a plate for four people. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. And, and I did it with the chairman. I did it with the, um, Joe Dunford and General Milley and, and, and some other folks. Um, when you cook at home, there has to be a plan. Not like I just said, right? Because I, I do it for a living and much like the mums do, right? Mums can, mums are the most amazing thing. They can whip up anything. Not me. <laughs> no, it, it is crazy. I have, a, I have a, a, a big blogging group for my fitness bar, all, all mums who come up with some of the most amazing recipes from nothing. But when you, when you are at home, if you can plan something on a Sunday, because you know pretty much what's going to happen. Uh, you know, Johnny's going to swim practice, Melissa's football practice, soccer, whatever. You know those days when you're going to be busy. If you can plan a menu, supposed menu, prep that stuff, purchase that stuff on a Sunday, prep it on a Sunday into little bundles, 
You can Chef, have a meme on this Chef, page. Hold, hold on real quick. Check check Facebook Live. What's wrong? Signs off. It says mm-hmm. uh, there's an error on there. Mine's it, running just fine. Yeah, mine's running too. We're running. Is it, is it running? Ahead. Sorry about yeah. that, Chef. You go That's ahead, Chef. Big. Always, always prepared. I love that. I love hey, that. Make sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't want nobody to miss all the secrets. All the secrets. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do 20 for you before we go. I'm going to do 20 for you before we go. So I don't want them. I don't want them dinosaur push ups, though. No, no, <laughs> you're going to get a full. I'm yeah, gonna, get army push ups. They're yeah, army push ups. <laughs> um, so, so you make the menu, you buy the food, and then, because what we, I don't know about you guys, but I only have a certain amount of money, and that's a true statement. I know what I can spend a week. I have a budget like everybody else. I go in the store. I've got my list. And I go specifically to, to what I've made the list on. I don't go up and down the aisle because I'm buying everything. I'm buying candies. I'm buying cookies. I'm, I'm buying everything. Just the way the world goes. Um, so I have a specific thing. I go in. I grab everything. I know it's there. I prep it. And in 10 to 15 minutes, normally you could put dinner on the table for, for two kids, yourself and your husband, maybe three kids, whatever, um, whatever many you have. And it shouldn't take more than that. Because if you're prepped, you know, you know that's my phone going off, sorry. Uh, okay. You know what you're going to eat, you know what you're going to drink, and you know what you're going to spend. And I live my principles of, of any big dinner. You said, you know, we, we do 20,000, 6,000, however many people. I have a budget for those people to be fed. You know, just like the military does in the defects and and galleys. So I, I'm very cognizant of that. I give a lot of money away to charity. You know, we have a big foundation. So for me, if I can see my money help somebody else, and, and no, I'm not a saint, I'm not an angel. I've made more mistakes than anybody on this planet. But I truly believe if you plan and work the plan, do I sound like a military guy now? Work the plan, <laughs> you, can, you can achieve anything. And that's how I run my life. And that's how the show is. That's how, that's how everything. I run my team. And we have 11 companies. I run my teams just like the military. I have a chief, right? His name's Justin. You, you probably talked to Justin, some yeah. of you guys. Yeah. My COO, he's my chief. He's the one that, you know, I come up with it and he makes it happen. And then he kind of does this. And it's no different than the family. We have budgets, we have, we have um, projects, and we have accountability. So um, when, you, when you cook at home, what I would like you to do is get your kids involved. You know, when I, when I, my, my girls are now 22 and 18, one's almost a pediatric uh, speech pathologist doctor. Wow. One's uh, in um, criminal law in Philly right now, is uh, doing public defending in her schooling right now. But my kids were always in the kitchen and I have some sharp knives. When my kids were two and three years old, I would give them a sharp knife in front of two or 3,000 people on the stage and let them cut tomatoes on a, on a, a milk carton or something. Oh People would be like, oh my God, oh my, just like that. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, listen, you, you have to teach kids, making sure safety, of course. I mean, I had my hand on the knife with her. It's not like I was going to let her cut herself. Um, but she has to understand, or they had to understand that it's sharp. There's heat and it burns. And when you get a boo-boo, it, it'll fix, but it takes time. Um, and I think I taught my kids about food. My mother used to say to me, don't play with your food. So I'd be sitting down and I'd move around the plate if I didn't like it. And in <laughs> them days, it was, and I sound like old, and I am. but in them days, you either ate it or you didn't get anything to eat. And my dinners, and I and it's, tell this story to my guys, white bread, butter, and sugar. That was my dinner. That's how I grew up. <laughs> I know it sounds really weird, but that's how I grew up. My mother would laugh at, you know, my dad was in the army. My mom, my brother was in the army. Uh, I joined the Navy and, and that's how we ate. So get your kids involved in the kitchen, get them having fun, let them make a mess, let them go to the store with you. You know, this time it's a little difficult because we don't talk about many people in the stores now. Um, but when it gets better, you know, I want them to see fresh vegetables. I want them to understand what, what is unique. And I took my kids and made a game out of it. They picked five vegetables. They got 25 cents if they got it right, what the vegetable was. Now it's probably a dollar. I don't know. Um, and then I would cook with it and make it, make it look different to what it was. And my kids, they ate chicken nuggets, but they weren't fast food eaters. And they're still not fast food eaters. They like to cook both of them. Um, and I think that's through growing up. Well, this is an apple. 
you know, what can we do in Apple? I mean, not just eat it. There's so many things we can do with it. And I think that's the biggest message. Food, family, fun, fitness. Four Fs right there. I love that. That's fantastic. Another F. <laughs> oh, there you go. Put up, Bob, Judy. Another F. <laughs> Leah. <laughs> so, Chef. That now. We crack ourselves up. <laughs> we do. We're like, this This is really us. Like, we're this, this is, way all the time. We're just goofy. Um, and I, bad uh, jokes. Uh, bad jokes all week. All week. <laughs> Trust me. Stop. Yeah. Poor so, chief. <laughs> chef, what's ahead for you? Is there any, do you have any upcoming projects you'd like to tell us about? So um, we are, as I said earlier, we're back on the road in a week uh, and buses doing slightly different. Um, we have some new food product. I'm always working on food products um, and making things healthier. We have, I think, a hundred and something products that are in retail taking sodium, taking, taking um, sugars, taking, you know, things like that out to make sure, but without sacrificing the flavor of the food. Uh, so we have cheesecakes. We're always working. I've got a new couple of, of bars coming out that are, um, are very clean. Actually, oh, oh, I will. Oh, hang on. Uh -oh. Hang on. Big reveal. Oh. Oh. Is this an exclusive? Oh. Yeah. Exclusive. Here we go. <laughs> Big reveal. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. World exclusive. I mean, Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. He went to his kitchen to get something to show us. This is, this is a world exclusive. World oh, exclusive. Oh, 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 what is this? Literally, I am telling you, nobody, only me. So, <laughs> oh, you're going to go nuts. All right. I'm going to open him, but look, this one's a new bar. Oh. This one's called a, a chocolate coconut. We've just developed. It even sounds good. Like his yeah. tearing of the wrapper. Oh, <gasps> I'm hungry now. On, oh my on, gosh, on, I need on, that. On. This is coconut and chocolate, like a mounds bar. Oh my Woo! gosh. Hello, yeah, for bar. sure. When are these coming out? When are these coming out? Apple pie. Oh, I like <gasps> apple pie. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh, I want that <laughs> Get in my belly. <laughs> oh no, look at this. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> apple pie that looks mm. so good is that a caramel drizzle on top it is it is chief right. and it look tastes like apple pie look at that right now, oh my gosh i want that then i'm gonna give you so what my wife is very she doesn't do chocolate she doesn't do dairy she's very funny with it she's an athlete right yeah athlete. <laughs> anyway <laughs> so so i made this bar for her because she complained that she doesn't do chocolate and I'm like, I'm all the bad habits. So <laughs> this one is a cranberry vanilla almond. Oh, oh, that sounds nice. Oh my gosh, that looks like candy. It does. There is no sugar, there are, this is all natural. The fruit, the fruit, the cranberries and almonds and the vanilla are all, all natural. It's the cleanest bar, it will be the cleanest bar in the history of bar making on the planet, period. So oh, now wow. you've seen three new bars we have four coming out. Um, <laughs> my wife, I haven't even seen them yet. Uh oh. Uh -oh. We won't tell her if you won't no. tell. Her. Yeah, we won't tell, but you're going to, we're going to have those in exchanges, right? We'll be seeing those in the exchange. You got to buy them, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing, you know, oh my goodness. Chief, dude, I'm going to send you some. I can't do that because it's, I can't, but I'm, it's unbelievable. We'll figure it out with Jack. <laughs> um, the coolest thing is everything we sell in all the exchanges and commissaries and, and um, APs is goes back to our foundation. And we talk about giving back and the military is a big part, which we just said, but um, we buy dogs for severely handicapped warriors we thought you can look at the foundation robert irvine foundation.org to to find out what we do but um i will tell you there's nothing and on the back of all the packaging of these you will see why we do it right it, and it's for the men and women that wear the cloth of our nation that have been injured that have been and i'm just trying to look here uh, i'm going to show you one picture 
because it's a little doggy that we've everybody loves dogs oh I agree so this is the dog that we've just given to, to the firefighters oh. as a post-traumatic pet oh, dog cute. and oh. then this one is called Apollo and this was our and I, this was Apollo my first dog that I bought oh. And uh, wow. his owner, an army guy, um, lost his leg, um, had to have some more five five um, operations in the last month, and the dog never left the side. So Aww. when we buy these dogs, they're $20,000 each. We train them for a year in Tampa. Then we find, so we've got a, a police officer in Colorado who's shot on duty. So he will get the next dog that's being trained right now. So... I just want people to know when you ever buy a Robert Irvine product, money doesn't go in my pocket. I can guarantee that. You can see it all over that site of what we do with it. Um, we support TAPS, USO, Garrison East, all these, these great organizations that do, you know, different than what we do. We're all about food, fitness, mental health. And um, that's why we create these products. So, so if you came to me and said, oh, we want a chicken, that's stuffed with 300 milligrams of sodium because, you know, that's what we want. By the way, I've already done it, so you can't have it. Well, you can, but I've already done it. <laughs> um, so we create those, those kind of fun things that don't sacrifice flavor, that can help our folks in their, in their goals. And, um, you know, there are a lot of mums out there and dads that want a new health regime every January, right? <laughs> Yeah. Do this. New Year's resolution. <laughs> but we have a program. We have a program that I just did it. I had a a nationwide search for the best story about why you want to change your health. And it can be whatever. We have you guys pick it. And then I, I buy a trainer, I buy the clothes, I put them through there to, to achieve their goals. And that to me is it, it's fulfilling and it's enlightening and it's it's um releasing, right? Because Sometimes if you've got four kids, you don't have time to go to a gym. You're busy taking care of the kids while your husband's deployed or vice versa. And our job is to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to do what they want. And that's, that's the biggest part for me. You can eat this, but you can also eat this. <laughs> I'm going to, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I've done one workout today, but I'm going back. <laughs> hey, Chef, so I'm going to ask uh, a couple of questions here yep. from, from, from the fans. Daniel Rocio asks, what dish, uh, what dish that you prepared in the Royal Navy did you find the most memorable? It's funny. Um, I used to be one that's, that's most memorable and that still stands as tradition today. So two different things, but the same. Um, when I was on a warship, I used to be in the wardroom galley, officer's galley, 22, 22 officers, 240 men. And every day, we normally sleep between 2 and 4 in the afternoon on our watch get up and do and do dinner at four till dinner time um i wouldn't go to sleep i would start making cakes and cookies and something just happened there i don't know what that was let me just get rid of that are we um, good okay yeah we're good something okay. just popped over my oh. um so i would start making um cakes and sandwiches and for the wardroom and i i'm like you know guys this is really nice officers getting this but what about the crew so we went into the main galley, we had 240, and I asked the commander, the skipper, if the wardroom would mind coming in the main, in the, and then obviously the chief to make sure that we could, you know, do the right things. And that's, and, and it's so funny, because I went on with General Salver onto a minesweeper, British minesweeper in uh, Rhoda, Spain, in the middle last year of them doing this ritual, afternoon tea. Um, so, so I would say that was probably the, the biggest thing that's ever stuck in my mind is making sure that, you know, tea and stickies, you know, cakes and sandwiches in the afternoon. But I, I'm even to this day, anything I cook, doesn't matter whether it's in D.C. for it could be for the president, it can be for anybody. And I do that a lot um, over years, the last five presidents, in fact. For me, it's it's the the actor engaging in cooking for somebody that you care about. It's like going to a restaurant. It's not necessarily the restaurant, the food, and everything's great. It's the people you go with that, that set the expectation and experience. Mm -hmm. So every time I go cooking 
And I can tell you on a C-17 or a C-5, and I've done a lot of trips in those, not as many as you, Chief, but, you know, when we do sous vide cooking, you know, water agitating around in bags, uh, around the bags and heating. Um, we cook meals for 40 or 50 people on those planes that are better than five-star restaurants. Mm. And it's, it's the experience of, of doing that. You know, we were in Mosul two years ago, and I took my wife um, it's two years ago with Joe Dunford, and we cooked for 1,000, 101st Airborne in the middle of, of taking back Mosul from, a, from an airport. Yes. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's not only my military, it's, it's those little things. I used to love making mashed potato. Why? Because I could put 16 pounds of butter in it. I'm feeding 200, 300 people. 16 pounds <laughs> of butter is okay. Um, but that's the way I make my mashed potatoes today. I don't like lumps. If it's called mashed, it's mashed. It's, it's, there's, no, there's nothing. It's like, it's like paint on a plate, you know? Um, and and I, my biggest mess up turned out to be one of my biggest blessings. I remember... There was a chief in, in my first air station in Coldrose in Cornwall, which is right at the bottom tip of, of England, kind of down here. Um, not only did they mess with me and send me two miles to put money in a box when the, uh, the uh, electric went out. There was no box and there was no money, just the electric went out, but I was the schmuck that went. <laughs> um, but I remember him giving my first job was to cook 3,000 hard-boiled eggs. And I went, well... How do you cook 3,000 boiled eggs? You know, 11 minutes for 3,000 times, 11 minutes, right? <laughs> but when I came back, there was nothing left of the, the eggs. Then it was nothing, just a big black mess in, the, in, the, in the, the copper. But egg salad is one of my favorite things to make now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it sounds silly, but they're, 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 for every food that I cook, there's a story to go with it somewhere. It's kind of, you know. Oh, I, know. I like that. I have some hey, fun with that. Hey, Chef, I got a few more questions here. I'm going to speed through them really quick. Because um, then we also have one impossible task for you to do. Cool. Where we go. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> that task is for No, there's no such thing as an impossible task, right? I, I know. I know. That's what we're going to find out. <laughs> okay. We don't mess about with this. <laughs> so Jason May just want a comment here. He says, We built bombs in an undisclosed location. Just wanted you to know that. Yeah. That's what he said. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer says, Yes, he indeed. Uh, he invited my son up to cook with him and it was great. My son chopped some food and was only 11 at the time. Goes back to your topic about bringing your children up and start teaching them about food. Um, some of the questions here, I'm gonna go quickly through them and you can answer them as quick as you want. Yep. Jose, uh, Jose asked, are you still publishing your magazine? Laura asked, where do you get your inspiration for so many great recipes? Yes, and we're publishing the magazine and the, the um, it's online now. Um, it's robertovinemagazine.com. Um, where do I get the inspiration from? Daily folks, daily life. Um, when somebody says to me, like my wife, oh, I, I can't eat this, then, I, then that's, my, that's my sign to say, okay, how do I remove this to make it so that, so all our bars, for example, somebody kept saying to me, oh, I'm gluten-free, I'm gluten-free, I'm soy, I'm da, da, da. so we changed the whole line that way. So it's people that give me inspiration to change, um, to make it better for them. Shakira uh, Fernandez asks, what is your budget for the week? My budget for food. <laughs> oh, in the house now, it's like because I'm spending about 200 bucks a week. Hmm. And I can tell you that because that's, I just did it yesterday. I do about <laughs> 200 bucks a week and there's Gail and I. So it's about a hundred bucks each. If I'm on the road, a meal for me on the road is about 120. Because, uh, but yeah, because I am not. And I can tell you why. Because I order one of everything on the menu. <laughs> Because I want to try it and I want to see it and I want to experience it. Oh. And then, I, you know, I have teams with me. But just for me, that bill just for me is about 120 bucks. We wow. should so go to dinner with him. Yeah. Can, you, can we come to dinner with you next time you're in Dallas? Can you we come? The, you will have the best time, believe me. And I'm always <laughs> in Dallas because American Airlines is there and we do Skyball there. That's right. Yes. Christy, Christy Bullock asks, my boys want to know if you could beat Chef Ramsay in a cook-off. <laughs> Right, here's some smack talking right now. Okay? Uh oh, <laughs> she wrote it. She wrote smack it. Smack talk right now for her uh, and the boys. A, yes, he tried to do a Royal Marine. He tried to do a Royal Marine <laughs> obstacle course. Right, he failed. I do that every day of my life. That's easy. And when I was in when I was in Iraq, the golden the golden dragons 
took me on a little 11 minute workout. When I was in Japan, the commandos or the, the Marines took me on, a, on a, um, an obstacle course, not once, not twice, but two obstacle courses, the Marine fitness test and two, two and a three quarter laps round a 400 meter track. Then as cooking, I use whatever there is. Gordon, when he cooked for the troops, has to bring in filet mignon. And what? what who, who eats filet mignon in the base? Who eats fresh herbs? Who gets... Really? Dude! It's the military! You use what you got! So the answer is to your boys, yeah, there's not a worry in my mind that I can't do this for him. Is that good? Is that good? Is that good? Smack good? Great answer. Lee, I missed one question. Did you have one? There was one, I missed it. I did. So Charlotte Isom, she says, oh. what is the one thing you would tell someone about opening their restaurant that you wish you had known? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do right. it. Don't so, do so it. I'll just tell you, the real, the, Charlotte, the real facts are, when, you, when you're when you going to open any type of business, you have to look at the lease first and foremost. What are the small prints in the lease? Because normally a 10 year is five years and then another five years, but that you can't get out of them. One thing I tell people now is if you do a business that's worth a million two, so you, you're going to sell a million dollars worth of product. You're going to walk away after one year with maybe 95 to $120,000 in your pocket. You're going to work 90 hours a week. You're not going to see your family. You're going to argue with your husband if you're still married. Your kids are not going to know who you are. And by the way, before you, when you do that $1.2 or $1 million, you have to have the equivalent of the first six months of your bills in a separate account. Mm -hmm. In other words, half a million dollars. Then you have to have what we call an owe it fund. Something goes wrong. The minute you sign the lease, the high back goes out, the refrigeration goes out, the, the range breaks. You got to replace it because now it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. that, that's, so that's your money. So you've got to have basically that million dollars in your hands before you even open a restaurant. Wow. And the number one failing restaurant in the world is Italian. Huh. Not that the Italians are bad because everybody thinks that they can make Italian food well. The gravy, the sauce, no matter where you come from, right? We call it gravy or sauce. My mom thinks I make the best gnocchi. My mom thinks I make the best brown gravy, the best <laughs> tomato sauce. What do you do? Open a restaurant. The first six months, you are so proud because you've opened this restaurant. You invite all your friends, you give them a drink, you give them food. And in six months down the road, you realize you're half a million dollars in debt. And you call me. <laughs> so my rule is, Unless you've got that million dollars in the bank, unless you understand the P&L, the profit and loss, and the, the break-even points and anything else, don't even think about it because you will lose whatever you hold dear to your heart. Your husband or wife, whichever way, your kids, and then your sanity mm. in that order. If that doesn't wow. put you off, call me. <laughs> Great advice. Leah, did I miss anything else or is that... No, I think you're good, Chief. Hey, so I'm, I'm going to, um, I know you have a huge social media presence, Chef, so I'm just going to give a reminder for all our viewers. You know, uh, if, you're, if you're on Twitter, Robert Irvine, Instagram, Facebook, Chef Irvine, his website, of course, Chef Irvine, the foundation. If you want to know more about where the money goes to and what's he doing with it, robertirvinefoundation.org, fitcrunch.com. You can see it on his shirt. And he showed us uh, the world premiere, some new fit crunches, which was apple pie. Mm -hmm. What was it? Chocolate, coconut. And what was the last item? So th and then we got almond, cranberry, and vanilla, mm -hmm. which is, we, we're not sure we're going to call this the Fit Bar or the Fit Fuel Bar. Hmm. So you can find out more at fitcrunch.com. He has Boardroom Spirits, boardroomspirits.com, Food Line, Robert Irvine Foods.com, and a Tropicana restaurant, uh, troplv.com, T R O P L V.com. So before we go, Chef, we have. One thing, we have one, one show for you to do for us. It's called Recipe Impossible. Got it. <laughs> Recipe Impossible. Dun, 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 dun. Where's the music at? There's no, all right. I wanted no you, budget. If you're going to do that music, you have to get a tightrope and you have to like tiptoe over the tightrope. <laughs> it's a low budget here. Low budget. <laughs> low budget. <laughs>
afford that. Look, we just got we just got these cool microphones. That's Smooth nice, grooves. Though. That's a nice microphone, though. You're on with the chief right now. Smooth grooves. What www. A great, what, a, what a great radio. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, right? Here it is, right? Here's the challenge. So you have to provide us a recipe. We'll use chicken as the base protein. Everybody has chicken in their house for the for the audience members. Yep. Everyone has chicken. So we'll use that as the protein. You have to give us a recipe that we, and they can make with regular household items, right? Maybe they have heavy cream, grape seed oil, spices, you know, green onions, rosemary, things of that nature that people would typically have in their house. None of this, none of this, you know, uh, uh, Chief, food Chief, network, I truffle oil for your coming, with... coming from France, you know, uh, balsamic vinegar from Tuscany, none of that. Simple, give us but a recipe right house, that people Chief. can make We're at, at my home. house now. <laughs> 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 All right, so it starts really simple. You take a, a six or eight ounce chicken breast, however they come in your packet. Mm -hmm. You cut them in half. So if the, that's the breast, you just cut it in half. Not this way, lengthways. Why? Because it's going to cook quicker. You season salt and pepper. One thing about salt and pepper, and I'm just throwing in this for yourself, not that it's part of the recipe, but I'm going to give you education here. If you can get a coffee grinder and buy, uh, and buy um, um, sea salt and peppercorns and grind it up yourself the heat from the essential oil gives me a better flavor in the peppercorn and it comes out natural unlike buying a pound of pepper that that sits in your pantry or one of those cold things mm -hmm. because whenever you whenever you use spice you have to heat it to bring out the essential oils so so those cold things that do this are no really good anybody using in the restaurant i laugh at them because they're, they're, <laughs> they're useless um, Man, so you know, I've been doing you know, it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It, it, because if you take nutmeg or you take peppercorns or you take, you have to normally heat them in the oven to bring out the, 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 the essential oils. And it's like a micro, when you, when you have lemon, if you want the lemon flavor, you microwave the, the lemon, orange juice, grapefruit for about 30 or 40 seconds. So it gets warm on the outside and the skin starts to sweat of the, of the fruit. That way you get in the essential oils when you squeeze the lemon, not just the juice. Hmm. So we, if you can do that, great. If you can't, we got salt and pepper. <laughs> salt and pepper, both sides on a tray, season it both sides. Put the pan on hot. This is the garbage thing. Put the pan on, no oil in the pan. No oil. It nice and hot. Then put a little oil in, then put your, your, your chicken in. Do not shake the pan <laughs> leave it because if you do a or b you remember these you will break the adherence of the sear which means it won't become golden brown and and that's the sugar coming out of the chicken right okay so if i have an eight ounce chicken breast i've cut it in half i've seasoned it i put it down i leave it three minutes i turn it three minutes without doing this then I take it out. I leave it on the side. I take an onion, chop the onion up. You know how to chop an onion, right? I hope so. <laughs> either, either dice it or don't dice it. Cut it in half and just chop it down. A little bit of garlic. If you have garlic, if not, it doesn't matter. In the same pan you cook the chicken, add a little bit more oil. Cook the, the garlic and the onions if you have garlic, but definitely the onions. Chop up a tomato or open a can of tomatoes. Once the onions are translucent, cooked. That's a big word for an English guy, translucent. <laughs> Once the onions are cooked, garlic, da, 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 da. Now, if you have garlic, do not chop it like dice. Slice it nice and thin, just straight through, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to leave the skin on it, you can. It's going to dissipate in the sauce. It's good for you. It's not going to hurt you, okay? Okay. Leave the skin on if you want. If not, take it off. Onions, garlic, sweat it down so they're translucent. They're cooked, they're nice. Add the tomatoes, either fresh or canned. Little salt, little pepper. Then leave it for about five minutes into the blender. Blend it. You don't have to blend it. I would say blend it because that's what I do. Okay. Then put it back in the pan. Put the chicken back in the sauce. Leave it for about two or three more minutes. Adjust the seasoning just before you serve it. If you have cream cheese or Ooh. sour cream or, or vanilla yogurt or anything like that, a little dollop of that in there, stir it up, 
serve it over pasta or baked potatoes, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, some green beans sauteed up. I mean, if you can't Sounds cook that, really good. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm starving. I like, I'm going to make that for dinner. That sounds so it's really good. Simple. It's really simple. Um, and again, if you like a chunky sauce, don't, don't blend it. Um, but everybody has tomatoes. Everybody has an onion, some garlic. I mean, they're, they're just common items. Um, I did one the other day, which was really interesting. Taking the same chicken breast um, and cutting a hole in the end, the big end, and taking a breakfast sausage and squeezing it or just putting it right in there, season it, sear it just like I showed you, and finish it in the oven. Unbelievable. You, People you went nuts over just it. stuff the sausage in the chicken? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Literally, I mean, it's literally, you cut a hole in so the sausage fits in it, right? Because it, uh, there's no hole, girl, it's, it's just, it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. Um, you, don't need to take, you don't need to take the skin off the sausage because it just gets messy or you can use a chorizo or anything that's sausage driven, but it's gonna add a different layer of flavor. And when it cooks, remember protein tightens up. So imagine the, the, the chicken in the, uh, sorry, the sausage in the middle, and then you cook the chicken in the oven. So you seared it, three minutes, three minutes, finish it in the oven for about seven. The biggest thing is when you cook something, you gotta make sure that it's gonna cook all the way through. And if I stuff something, it's gonna take a little bit longer, right? That's common sense. Yep. So if I sear it three minutes, three minutes, get that golden brown and the sugar to come out, I need about seven minutes of 350 degrees to make sure the internal temperature is hot, okay. right? And then that, that's how it cooks. But if I do a steak that is a fillet, because I don't use fillet, but you will, right? If you can afford fillet. <laughs> a fillet that's five ounces or a sirloin that's eight ounces, the same thing, dry pan, if you've got a cast iron skillet, great. If not, regular pan. Heat it up. Don't use the barbecue grill. I will kill you. <laughs> I use that. the grill. Oh. Yeah, he will kill you. Kill you. I'm, don't do it. Why would you spend all that money and not control the temperature of it? And you can't do that on a grill. In a pan, I can put it in, season it. Pans, so I start with a pan that's dry, nice and hot. I add the oil, season my steak, put it in. No, A or B, same rules. <laughs> Five ounce steak, three minutes. Turn it over three minutes, rest it for three minutes. It's going to be perfectly medium rare. Resting meaning just taking the heat off, just lift the pan up, cover it, leave it. If you have an eight ounce steak, four minutes, four minutes, four minutes. 10 ounce, five, 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 12, six, six, six. A piece of fish that's eight ounces, a piece of salmon, hot pan again. Shh. Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. We, we tend to overcook things. Don't, you don't need to. It will cook, believe me, if the pan is hot, but you can't put a cold pan and expect things to cook in it when it's cold. <laughs> well, I've got chefs that do that, it drives me nuts. Get the pan <laughs> hot, but remember, when you're at home, and this is a safety tip, when you're at home and you've got the pan hot, if it looks like it's smoking and you've got no liquid in it, please do not put liquid in it. In other words, oil. Remove it from the heat, let it cool down a bit, and then add the oil. Because if you don't, the heat of the pan will ignite the oil when you put it in. Okay. And I'm not oh, no. scare people, but if we leave the pan on for five minutes and it starts to smoke with nothing in it, and it will, it's too hot to put oil in. Okay. Just got move it, it to the side. Let it settle down for a couple of minutes and then put your, put your oil in. It's still going to heat up. Move it back to the stove and continue. If your pan ever catches fire in your home, and I've seen them, I've done it on stage because the pan has been too hot, do not panic. Do not throw water. Do not do, do, do. All you need to do is take another pan of equal diameter, invert it, and hold it on top to remove the oxygen. But you have to stay there for a minute, unless you have a, a blanket, a fire blanket, then you can use that. But but do not lift it off straight away because the fire will reignite. Okay. So leave it on there. Let it turn the heat off. Leave it on there. Let it set. Leave it for about three or four minutes till it dies down. Then you can lift off the top. Hey, anyway. chef. So, so Sonia says, just confirming, 
put the meat in dry pan and then later put in oil? I think no. You said get that pan no. hot. Get the pan the oil. hot, then the oil. You've already seasoned it, whatever you're putting in it, then put it in and then do not mm. A or B. Do not shake it. You got that, Sonia? <laughs> if you do an A and B, C is not going to work for you. <laughs> Well, Chef, thank you so much for spending time with us today. We appreciate you and your support of the Airmen, Soldiers, Sailors, Marines, Coasties, and family members. Before we go, any last words that you have for the audience out there? I just want to repeat what I said earlier. You know, with, with what you do every day is so special. I know sometimes you don't think that, but it really is. And, and to, to those on the peripheral viewing in, when I visit and I see these things, you know, just remember you are making a huge difference every day to the lives. And, and now we have so many sh shared joint bases. It could be anybody. When they walk in your stores, you don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Please do what you do every day. Be smiling, be happy. We don't know what day somebody else is having. We can't walk in their shoes um, because we've got our own shoes to wear. They don't know what's happening with us, but there's one thing that we all share, and that's common courtesy. A please, a thank you, opening a door, helping somebody. It's, let's not lose that, because that's what we grew up on. That's what we give. It's called service above self and customer satisfaction, because that's what keeps us who we are. I say thank you to each and every one of you that serves every day and serves a purpose higher than us. It's a big deal to me personally. Thank you for what you do every day and go out and change the world one person at a time. And all that takes is good morning. How's your day? Can I help you? God bless you all. God bless America. And thank you so much for doing this and including me in, in, in the world. Um, it's really cool. I get to sit at home, eat bars and talk <laughs> and, and play with garbage containers. <laughs> <laughs> we loved you. You were a fantastic guest. You're just incredible. Thank uh, you. And um, God bless you as well. Thank you, you sir. Know, you know where we are if you need anything else, please. Hey, Chef, stay on for a minute after this, after we get off. Yeah. Of thank course. you so much. I'm going to end the feed. Thank you. Don't thank hang you. up, but thank I, you. <laughs> I, I, I forget everyone out there. Food, family, fun, fitness. F. Thanks, y'all.